Today we're going to do something different. We're going to try to find gold with two different types of pans. Traditional plastic pan, which you've all seen, and the old timer metal pan that they used to use back in the day. And if you watch to the end, we've got a really big surprise for you that you're not going to want to miss. So let's get into it. Now we're in a gold producing district and that's the first clue as to how to find gold. Got to go where it's already been found. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and down around here and I'm going to sample and see if I can find a nice tributary that feeds into this thing that might have some value. And we're going to try both of these pans and see which one that I can get into the gold fast. Just as I suspected, there's not a lot of gold, if any, in this creek right here. Uh, we sample panned up and down. I used my plastic pan because I can go faster with that. So I'm noticing up here on the bank, you see where it's cut in a lot of this silty sediment sand up on the top. And then you've got these nice gravel zones down here. In the gravel zones, you've got a whole bunch of float. Do you see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig into the bank and see if I can find anything. If not, then I'm gonna work my way up and find out where this float is coming from and see if there's anything in those tributaries. So, and of course, I'm gonna try the metal pan on this one too. and see which one I can pan faster and collect more material. some deep water. Now side note, if you're wearing glasses, take them out or you'll lose them. That's plastic. Take a peek at that. A lot of black sand. That's a good sign. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Ooh. Look at that. One itty bitty tiny speck right there <laughs> i knew it like i said it's not very large but it proves my point don't it and that's exactly what i thought it would be coming out because there's a tributary right next to it and i'm gonna tell you what <laughs> all right now the metal pan these are a little trickier These are a little trickier to work with. You can't be so aggressive with these as you can with that one because the riffles are so tiny. I love that metal sound that it makes. Ooh, I think I got one. I think I got one. Really, really tiny. Yeah. Definitely like the green pan better. I ain't gonna lie. It's harder to see on this one too. You wouldn't think so, but it is. It's hard for me to tell because you've got the silver and the rust and I know put it in a fire and blacken it up. Trust me, I know the story, but I haven't done that. Now you can pan with them, but you, it's really hard because the riffles are very, very shallow. It's easy for gold to get washed out of it. So I'm gonna leave the metal pan behind. I don't think it can get the gold like my Garrett Super Sluice and not in the time that you have. Because well, trust me, when you're out sampling, time is not your friend. You need to move from place to place to place as fast as possible. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna show you why I like this spot right here. This is the tributary right here. I know it doesn't look like much and most tributaries aren't. They can hide on you. I found many a gold in tributaries that just looked like it was a small little cut 
from erosion. But believe it or not, this goes all the way to the top of the mountains that are behind me. And it trickles out down here. Now what caught my attention when I was walking up and down this creek was that I noticed tons and tons of quartz. Yes, granted it's bull quartz, but it's all over in here. Just tons and tons of it. That means that there is a quartz outcropping somewhere on top of this hill. And so I want to go up here and see if I can find anything else. And I'm going to sample on the way up and see if we can find anything. The downside is I don't have any five gallon buckets. So any dirt I bring down is going to have to be in this gold pan. And we'll bring it back down here to the creek and I'll show you what I got. But this is what you should be doing too. If you're out in a gold bearing area and you're sampling, just look at some of the side tributaries. Look at some of the gravel benches that you see on the side where the streams have cut into them. Look for any signs of float, which is the small pieces of quartz that are gonna be broke off of a host vein somewhere. If you can find these tributaries, sample them, see if you can find anything. Now, just because you don't find anything down at the bottom of a tributary doesn't mean anything there's not up further. So I want you to take a look at that too. So we're gonna head up this tributary and see what we can find. Now, what do you see? Larger pieces of float. If you go up this hill high enough, you're going to see pieces like this, the size of my gold pan. Now, I'm not saying that all float is going to have gold in it. No, of course not. But it is a good indicator. And when you've done your research and you find out that most of the load veins, the gold was traveling in quartz, high silica content, that is going to be your primary target. Another thing that caught my eye as I'm working up this tributary is this bedrock right here. Look at this. See this? What does that look like to you? That's altered andesite. Most of these hills are made out of either basalt or andesite. And of course, as you get over the hill, you have more granitic host rock. But I like what I'm seeing in here. See that? So I'm going to go ahead and pull samples of that. And then I'm going to slowly work my way up and I'm going to see if I can find some more bedrock exposures. And I'm going to sample that. And together we're going to see if we can locate some more gold and possibly find a source. It's highly likely we will out here because these hills have been scoured for the last 150 years. But you never know because Mother Nature can erode a small vein that was hidden from the old timers that was only mere inches to a few feet and it'll expose it for you. And I've seen many a person find these shallow outcroppings with either a metal detector or because erosion from Mother Nature. All right, so we're going to start prospecting this spot. And of course, the bedrock you want is you're looking for cracks and fissures where the gold can get trapped. But I'm curious about this right here. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be gold in it, but I have to know. Good indicators, check it out. If you skip something, you're going to regret it later. All right, let's pan this out. I didn't see anything in that propolite, which is altered andesite. And that doesn't surprise me. I didn't expect anything in there anyway. But my point is you need to sample everything you come across that looks like an oddball, that looks something out of the ordinary. Because that's the time that you're going to find that one deposit that everybody else missed. So remember, sample, sample, sample. That should be your mantra anytime you're in the field looking for gold. Now, as I keep going up the hill, I get more and more of this beautiful float and it's getting bigger and bigger and I can see the host rock in there. And what do I see? That's right. I'm starting to get mineralization now. See that? It's nice and buggy. It's dark. This is what I'm looking for. I would like to see more of those bugs filled with blacks and browns because that's where your gold is and that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go up this little tiny draw, see how it's getting bigger and bigger. There's not gonna be anything in this flow sand or the sedimentary stuff. The gold's gonna go down too deep and I don't have the proper equipment to dig that far down. I'm gonna look for where mother nature has already exposed it. So we're just gonna keep heading up until I find something. And that's what you should be doing too if you're out in the field sampling. So come on, let's go, shh. Ooh, look at this, quartz monzonite. And look at this beautiful quartz vein running through it. You see that? Quartz is harder than quartz monzonite. This is going to erode, leaving this behind. And this is what you see a lot of times when you see these dikes extrusions up on the surface. is because the host rock is usually softer than the quartz. The silica is really, really hard. And what do you see in there? See the iron? <laughs> gobs and gobs of iron. Iron staining. This is exactly what we're looking for. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to keep working up. Like I said, I got to find a spot where I've got some kind of a bedrock, something for that gold to get trapped on because I'm gonna need a small backhoe to get down into this material. So we're gonna keep working our way up and see what we can find. So you know what I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say it because you've heard me say it a million times. Ah, ooh, I hope it rains. That's what I say. No, so come on, let's go. Look at the iron that's in this quartz. You see that? I'm getting tons and tons of iron in the quartz here. Just gobs of, and look at this, solid ironstone. That's always a good sign. 
and I'm getting lots and lots of schist. See that? See the schist? Green schist? You can't see the foliations, but I can. Lots of mic in there. Okay. So I had it up further and it's all a whole bunch of silt and sediment up here, but I found a spot right here that's bedrock. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off what I can. I'm gonna put it in a gold pan and we're gonna take it all the way back down to the river because I think this is my best shot right here because everything else looks pretty covered, but that's cool. Just gobs of ironstone. What did I tell you, right? You gotta be a detective when you do this kind of work. You gotta figure out what mother nature's little secrets are. And of course, she's always gonna have an ace up her sleeve, so don't think you can outsmart her. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this whole area clean. And I'm gonna get down as far as I can. The bedrock is right here, look at this. See this? This is decomposing bedrock, right there. So this is my best chance of finding anything in this spot. Let me get to work and we'll get on down to the creek. I cleared out this little spot right here. See this? It's all bedrock. Cleared it all out and it got it in my pan. We're gonna take it down to the creek and see if we got anything. All right, let's get on the creek because I'm really excited. I mean, this is really good looking material. All right, let's head on down. I'll tell you what, you really know the difference when that sun comes out. All right, let's get busy. Oh, man. Oh, there goes my glasses. Wow, look at that. See the quartz in there? Heavies. Tons and tons of black sand, you see that? Just got, oh man, that's nothing but. Look at that. You know you're on a winner when you got that much black sand in your pan. Okay, come on, baby. Daddy needs a new pair of galoshes. Where's my glasses at? I can't, can't see nothing without my glasses. Oh, there goes the sun. As good and as bad. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at all that black sand. The heck? That's a bullet. You see that? Oh, you know you're on the right track when you're digging up bullets. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, look at all the lead shot in there. See that? <laughs> That's nothing but bullets and lead shot. Come on, baby. Oh, that looks like gold right there. Yeah, there's gold. Look at all that lead shot. That's nothing but lead shot. And I got little pieces of gold in there too. There's one there. There's one there. See that rough piece? There's another one there. I'm gonna try to clean it up for you. Oh, and there's some more over here in the black sand that's trying to get away. Oh, I told you. A lot of lead. Look at that. That's all gold right there, see that? That's a lot of black sand. Let's see if I can scoot that over. There you go. See that? Gold, gold, little pieces of gold. That is cool. Nice. 
Now, trust me, there's gonna be times where it's a lot harder than this and times it's a lot easier than this. It's just the luck of the draw and being at the right place at the right time, okay? But what I want you to do is follow my instructions, watch all the videos that I got on how to prospect. I guarantee watching all that, doing what I do and getting out on a place or an area or a district that is known to produce gold, I guarantee you're gonna find gold too. Just do what I told you. I know you're saying, Jeff, you promised us all a big surprise at the very end. Oh, I got a surprise so big, you're not gonna be able to handle it. It's just gonna blow your mind. Are you ready? Here it comes. Most of you know out there, we love to give stuff away to our patrons at the end of the month. You guys know this. This month, we're giving away a brand new Gold Monster 1000 metal detector. And of course, we're giving away specimen gold, silver bars, and bags of pay dirt. But what you don't know is that next month, what are we giving away? <laughs> That's right. We're giving away silver bars. All sizes, all shapes, all weights. If you ever wanted to get in on the giveaways that we have, now is the time. So we're giving away 25 ounce bars, eight ounce bars, 10 ounce bars, five ounce, one ounce, you name it, we're giving it away. If you're new to all this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks like that, okay? Click on it, just make a $10 pledge to become qualified to win one of these silver bars, all right? I thought you'd like that. And if you stick around long enough, Sonny Jim, you just might see us giving away gold bars like this, all right? <laughs> I bet you that just blew them pants off. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think about all this. And if you like videos like this, go ahead and watch this video, because I guarantee you're gonna love it. And I'll see you up in the gold fields.